Lynn asked me to talk a little bit about thread and uh, the poor woman has no idea what she's getting herself into. She said she walks into uh, shops, uh, quilt and sewing supply stores, and sees all the displays of threads and she doesn't even know where to start. And so she asked me if I had anything to say. Well, I do. Um, I am a total threadaholic. Now most quilters are fabric collectors and, and they call themselves uh, fabricaholics. Not me. I am a threadaholic. I keep them sorted by cottons versus rayons, which rayons are a little bit more of a shiny finish and very decorative. Um, I use those when I'm using the decorative stitches on my sewing machine. Although I will use the cottons too, you know, it just depends on what works for that quilt. Um, but you can see I've got a lot of bins of threads and uh, and I teach quilting so every time I teach I bring thread with me and my goal is not to um, convince anybody about uh, what thread to use and what not to use my goal is to show people the differences in the threads and to impart one thing that I've learned um, in many many years of quilting and teaching um, and that is that some threads work in some machines better than others. I can't explain it. I don't know anybody that can explain it. If you can explain it, please post a video response. Um, I, when I teach machine quilting, I, I have the ladies, I bring a lot of thread, and I have the ladies try different spools of threads in their machines until they find something that they're very happy with. And by very happy, I mean doesn't break a lot, um, isn't causing them problems with their machine. Now, I'm going to tell you my attitude about thread, and that's this. I am not a thread elitist. I am not um, only cotton fabric has to have cotton thread. That's not my game. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a use what works girl. And I don't care what it is, metallics, uh, cottons, rayons, polyester wrapped cottons, straight polyesters, I don't care what it is. My goal is to make a quilt right now. Not the la-di-da, you know, show quilts, you know, it has to be this way or that way. The, I don't, rules are not for me. So that being said, I'm going to tell you uh, what I know about thread. I'm not an expert. I am not an expert. Uh, if you want the expert opinion now, I really trust Harriet Hargrave. She's got quite a few books out and um, one of them talks strictly to fabrics and threads. And uh, I think she's got a lot of good things to say. So if you are looking for the expert, go talk to Harriet. What I can tell you is uh, what I've learned over the years and, and how I use thread. So let's take a look at some of the things I bring with me when I'm teaching. Okay, just by the number of bobbins I've got in these rings, which I love, you can see that I have um, quite, a bit of, quite a bit of thread. Uh, I've got a lot of bobbins that match my threads and that's because I love matching my colors. So top and bobbin, especially when I'm decorative stitching, I like to have the same uh, color, if not the same exact thread, um, an exact meaning off the same spool. Um, sometimes I'll match a uh, rayon on the top with a similar color cotton in the bobbin. Um, that helps secure the stitch a little bit more. If you've ever had a rayon in the bobbin, you know that sometimes the top and bobbin threads won't secure tightly um, just by themselves. The rayon is a very slippery thread and it's gorgeous and shiny and pretty, uh, but doesn't that means it doesn't adhere to itself very well. So you can either hand knot them, uh, do some back tacking, back stitching with your machine before you start your decorative stitch, um, or use a cotton in the bobbin and a rayon on the top. Um, so that's a, a rayon thread. When I'm buying thread, I want to know how much I'm getting. That's a big deal to me. So this spool of thread, let's find one that's got thread. Oh, here is uh, empty and full. Not quite full. I've been using some of this. Um, and let's do this here. Empty and full. So lots and lots of yardage on a spool like this one. And to me, that's important to know. Um, I, this may be the thread I choose to use, I just need to buy a lot of it for the project that I'm working on. Whenever I take thread to a class to teach, 
the goal is I pass the spools around through everybody in the class and I tell them, break it. Break that thread. I want you to understand how that thread works. Because 100% cotton thread, um, let's find 100, this is 100% cotton thread, is going to break and feel a lot more differently than a cotton wrapped polyester. That's what this thread is. Um, this, a cotton wrapped polyester is actually going to stretch and that's what I want them to feel. Uh, let me see if I can get that on the camera. This thread stretches. All right, I'm pulling, pulling my fingers apart here and that thread is stretching, all right? And it takes a lot. I'm gonna hurt my fingers doing this. And that's what I tell the gals in the class too. Don't cut yourself while you're doing this. Okay, so stretching and uh, finally breaking. That's the difference between a cotton and a polyester. Now this is very fuzzy. See that? Very fuzzy, looks good on the quilt but it's got polyester at the core and it's wrapped, the reason it's fuzzy, is it's wrapped with cotton. Now, the reason I like that is I like the cotton look, but the stretchy part, the polyester core, is a very forgiving. So if you are brand new at machine quilting, this is a really good thread to use. Um, cotton wrapped polyester and sometimes you can tell there's a sticker on the inside of these cones they're not all the same so you've got to take a look and see what does this one say cotton wrap poly core cotton wrap poly core love it I believe it was actually supposed to be for sergers so you try and use this on your um, home sewing machine and you're going to say, well, where do I put this? It doesn't exactly fit on any of the um, thread guides or thread holders. So that's where the coffee cup comes in handy is you want to rig something for your machine where this comes up off of the top. You don't want it to be pulling sideways. That won't work. Okay, sooner or later it'll get held up. You have to do it where, up at the top. So um, I love this thread though for so very many different things. Here's another, we already broke that cotton one. This one I can't even remember if it's a cotton wrap, it's poly or if it's straight cotton, but I'll bet I could tell you by how it breaks. Cotton. All right, and rayon, even more delicate than a cotton. It really breaks easy. Pull some off of the spool here and really easy to break. So, of course, easy to break means easy to break in your machine. And if you are tired of having machine uh, thread breakage issues while you are trying to quilt, get yourself a polyester thread, especially if you're a beginner. It's forgiving um, and you will have far less thread breakage issues um, if you give yourself that little head start. Um, also, if you're using metallics or any of the clear threads, um, check out this item called Sewer's Aid. I put it on my spools of thread. Uh, my daughter even puts it on rayons to help it glide smoothly through the machine. We've been doing this for 15 years and we have not ruined a machine yet. It's not going to gum up your machine or anything else. It's made for this purpose of helping your thread glide through the metal guides of your machine. So here's one thing I am particular about, and that is clear threads. Now this spool right here is polyester. When I say that this is cotton wrapped polyester, this is the polyester that's inside here. It just doesn't have the cotton on it. It stretches. It's wonderful. It doesn't show up very much on your quilt. It kind of buries itself right into the quilt fabrics. I love this. And this polyester clear, not nylon, polyester, 
is my absolute favorite for doing stitch in the ditch and things like that. Um, anything where I don't want my thread to show. And this is the opposite. This is nylon. It does not stretch. Well, all right, it's got a little bit of a stretch. It breaks very easily. Do you see that? Let's do it again. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. Now this, I didn't try and break. Let's be fair. Okay, it breaks too. Not as easy as the nylon. And I like the way it goes through my machine. But again, I will use um, some sewer's aid on it every once in a while if I if I feel like it, if I feel like there's too much tension, um, it's not flowing smoothly through the machine. And anytime, anytime I use a metallic thread, I always use sewer's aid because it's metal thread going through metal guides on my sewing machine. I have to lubricate it. It's the same reason you put oil in your car. Metal against metal does not work. This is the lubricant that will make it work well. One last word about threads. Now, they come in different weights and it depends too sometimes on the manufacturer and the country of origin whether the number is higher means a thinner thread or whether the higher number means a thicker thread. In general, just in general, the higher the number is the thinner the thread. So a lot of quilters like a 50 for piecing and um, and that's fine. Sometimes you can find the numbers on that label on the inside or you can find it on the bottom label. You can find it um, on this label on the end of the spool and here you can find it on the end of the spool. This is a 12 weight and this is a 40 weight. Let's take a look. A thin thread and a very thick thread. Okay, one last word about thread. This is fairly new. Um, this is a bobbin thread specifically made for use in the bobbin. I think it's uh, 60 weight, but I could be wrong. It is so thin and the material polyester. It's got a stretch to it and it's actually fairly strong. I've been thinking about trying it on the top and I might just do that. I'll let you know how that works. Um, the reason it's called a bobbin thread is because when you wind this onto a bobbin you can wind three times as much as say this type of thread which is so much thicker. Let's let's get a close-up of that too. So we've got the, the um, goldenrod and that uh, sort of a shimmery silvery white and you can see the difference in the thickness there. Isn't that incredible? Now anybody who's sewing for a while will tell you that um, or you'll find out for yourself you have to stop and wind bobbins or wind a bunch of bobbins before you start your project um, is a pain in the neck. So if you just have a few of these I have I keep about five of them as standbys and they last a nice long time and I love piecing with them just love them. I use this in the bobbin, the bobbin thread in the bobbin, and I'll use this on the top and I can go forever. Um, and I just love that. Lynn, thanks so much for asking about thread, my favorite subject, probably more than you wanted to know. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.